All right, so my name is Clement Michalescu, and today I'm going to talk to you about the A star search algorithm. So we just heard a great tech talk by my friend on Dijkstra's algorithm, which is another great pathfinding algorithm, arguably the founding father of path pathfinding algorithms. But Dijkstra's has one big drawback that I'm about to show you on this app that I built with my friend for this project. So assume we build a wall right here, and we bring our target node right all the way to the right of the grid behind the wall, and we bring our start node right here, and we run Dijkstra's. We know what's going to happen. It's going to explore the neighbors, it's going to go all the way to the target node, and it's going to find the shortest path, guaranteed. But you'll notice that we know the target node is to the right of the, of the start node. So why is this start node exploring all these nodes to the left, or to the top, or to the, at the bottom, right? There's a suboptimal exploration in this Dijkstra's algorithm. And that's where the topic of my tech talk, A star algorithm, comes into play. So what is the A star search algorithm? It is a pathfinding algorithm that is informed and that uses uh, heuristics. Now, what does it mean to be informed? It means that right at the beginning of the, when the algorithm runs, it knows exactly where the target node is located on the grid or on the graph. And it can use heuristics to guide its search to the target node. And so before we move on, we have to define what a heuristic is, right? In the topic or in the field of computer science, a heuristic is like a technique that's usually implemented through a function that helps you solve problems faster. And how does it do that? By estimating values. In, in our case, for pathfinding, it estimates distances or costs. Now, that is what is at the core of A star. You A star throughout its runtime, we'll try to minimize a function called f of n, which is the sum of two other functions, g of n plus h of n, where n is a node, the current node that you're exploring. g of n is the actual distance from your start node to this current node. Then h of n is your heuristic, which estimates the distance from your current node all the way to the target node. And then you sum these two and you get f of n. And you want to minimize this to get the shortest path with A star. Now, what is a good heuristic? How do you find this H of n, right? Well, first we define something called H prime of n, where H prime of n is the legitimate shortest distance from current node to target node. Assume you have the legitimate shortest distance. That's H prime of n. And if your heuristic lies somewhere between 0 and H prime of n, then that means that it is admissible, meaning that it'll never overestimate the distance to the target node, and you will always be guaranteed to find the shortest path with A star. And so if your heuristic starts to converge towards zero, you go back to Dijkstra's. If you converge to H prime of n, and you even reach H prime of n, then you have a perfect A star algorithm, which will always only explore the shortest path. But if you surpass H prime of n, then you get a heuristic that's called inadmissible. And what does that mean? It means that you might not be guaranteed the shortest path because you'll be overestimating the distance from the current node to the target node. And when you tend towards infinity with your heuristic, you get what's called greedy best first search, which is a really cool algorithm, but which pretty much weighs the heuristic so much more than anything else. Now, what happens if you do that? What happens if your heuristic is inadmissible and you, you get to something like greedy search? Basically, you're going to lose some accuracy. You might not get the shortest path, but you'll get to your path much faster, which might not necessarily be a, ba be a bad thing. So if you ever implement A star and you get an inadmissible heuristic, don't take that as a sign that you have to disregard the heuristic. It might be very good for you. So let's look at two, example of, two examples of very popular heuristics. One of them is called the Manhattan distance, and this one applies to a graph that's a 2D grid, where you can move up, right, left, bottom, and any turn costs you one distance, and moving forward costs you one distance as well. The Manhattan distance between two nodes, which is going to be your heuristic, is just the change in x between your current node and target node, and the change in y summed. And so that's never going to overestimate the distance. And so this is going to be an admissible heuristic. Similarly, if you could turn 360 degrees, so you could go in any direction, you could apply the Euclidean distance heuristic, which is just Pythagoras' theorem. 
Now, let's go through an example of how a, a star is really going to work. Very similar to Dijkstra's. You have your start node, your target node. Every unvisited node at the beginning has a distance set to infinity, except the start node, which is at zero, and it's your current node. And you start by updating the neighbors. But this time, you have three distances that you're updating. The one in the bottom left of each square is your current distance to that square. So like the one with a purple six has a two in the bottom left because you turned right and then moved forward. And that's basically the, the distance that you have for Dijkstra. Then the one in the bottom right, the four, that's going to be the Manhattan distance, so the change in x plus change in y. We're using Manhattan distance as our heuristic. And then you sum those two together. You get f of n, in this case, 6 for that square. And you're going to pick your next current node amongst these neighbors as the one with the smallest f of n, so in this case, 6. And then you're going to repeat the process. But here you notice that you get now three nodes that have an f of n of 7. So how do you pick between them? In Dijkstra, if you had three nodes with the same distance, you would go through all of them, you know, one by one. Whereas in A star, you only want to go to one. You're going to pick the one with the lowest Manhattan distance, in this case, the one with a three of Manhattan distance, and the other two with, with the seven are going to be ignored for now. And then as you go through this algorithm, eventually these are all the nodes that you're going to explore, and you're going to reach your target node by that red node with the 10, and that's going to be a guaranteed shortest path. And you're exploring far fewer nodes because you're never going to get to those left nodes. Those left nodes are going to have huge Manhattan distances that just makes them never reachable. So what does a code look like? Very similar to Dijkstra's when you update a node and update the distance. Almost identical, except you calculate this Manhattan distance, which is going to be our h here. You sum it with the g, and you compare it to the f then of the neighboring node. If it's smaller, you update that node. In terms of the uh, getting the closest node, again, similar to Dijkstra's, here it's a very simple unsorted array of unvisited nodes. You take the one with the least f of n, but then the little difference compared to Dijkstra's is that if you have multiple nodes with the same f of n, as I just mentioned, you're going to compare the heuristic, the Manhattan distance, and you're going to pick the one with the lowest Manhattan distance, and that's going to be your current node, which you then take out of the unvisited nodes list. That node is going to become visited, and you continue your algorithm from there. Now, very quickly, I want to dive into the runtime. Uh, I could do, we could do like a three-hour lecture on this, or we could, we could take a whole college class on this topic, but it is very important. Just like with Dijkstra's, data structures are very important. You can use a lot of different ones, like unsorted arrays, sorted arrays, you can use linked lists, you can use binary heaps, you can use, you know, kind of edited data structures like priority queues, hot queues. It turns out that none of them are necessarily the best. In theory, some of them are, but in applications, like if you're creating a game and you know that you're never going to explore more than, say, 30,000 nodes, then a binary heap, which would theoretically be better than, say, a sorted array, might not actually be better. It might be worse for 30,000 nodes and only become advantageous if you had to explore, say, like 200,000 or a million nodes. And, uh, but at the end of the day, if you have you know, these huge games or these huge applications of A star and you have tons of nodes, you're probably going to want to use hybrid data structures, which I'm not going to get into right now. So before I get to the key takeaways, I want to show you a visualization of A star so that you can see what it looks like compared to Dijkstra's. So if we clear our board here and we do kind of the same thing that, that I started the presentation with, we put our, our target node here and we put our start node here, we remember what Dijkstra looked like, right? Like a diamond. Whereas if we do A star, it's going to only go towards the right where the target node is and it's guaranteed to find the shortest path without exploring all these other left nodes. And you'll notice one thing that's cool. If you move the, the, um, the start node up here where the wall doesn't block it, all it explores is the shortest path. Why? Because the Manhattan distance along this path is always equal to the shortest path, which is h of n equals h prime of n. Thus, you have a perfect a star kind of run. Um, now, if I can show you the difference between a star and greedy search, if you do greedy, which only weighs the Manhattan distance, it'll explore it much faster, and it'll explore even fewer nodes. So you might think, oh, whoa, greedy is much better. I'm going to use an inadmissible heuristic all the time. No. 
let's wait a second. If we create um, this stair demonstration that, I pr that I've prepared here, and we put our target node here, we put our start node here, and we do A star, as expected, it'll find the shortest path. It might take a while because these walls are blocking it, and it'll have to kind of explore a lot of nodes because the walls are blocking it, but it will eventually find the target node, and it will eventually be guaranteed to find the shortest path because it is an admissible heuristic. So there you have it, the shortest path. But what happens if we do greedy here? Greedy is going to run much faster, but it's not going to find the shortest path. Greedy is just going to plow through the walls, not explore anything else, but it's going to do a bunch of turns along the stairs, which add a ton of power distance to the, to the path. So this is not the shortest path. And now a last example is if we do this weights demonstration, where we have here weights that add 15 distance to the, to the, um, to the path. And we, do, we put the target node right here, and we do A star. A star, since, remember, A star takes into account, um, uh, take, A star takes into account both the current distance and the heuristic. So A star is going to get stopped by these weights, and eventually it'll find the shortest path all the way to there. But now if we refresh this, and we do, we do the same thing, because it would take a little while because this grid is super long. We do the same thing, but with greedy search. Greedy is going to be just like brutal, and it's going to plow through. It's going to plow through the weights, only taking into account the Manhattan distance, and get a path that is not the shortest path. Because if it were the shortest path, it would go all the way around like A star would have if we had let it run. Now, the key takeaways from this are that A star is like a great algorithm but it's very dependent on heuristics, right? Depending on how you pick your heuristic, you're going to get something very different in your search. And admissible heuristics aren't always the best. Sometimes, you know, if you're playing a game or if you're creating a game, you might not care about getting the shortest path absolutely. You might care about runtime. You want it to run very fast. Or maybe you want to have, you want to explore more than just the target node because the, the typical A star that uses the Manhattan distance is going to, only go for that target node and disregard all the left nodes. So what if you were in a game, like a real-time strategy game, where you have, say, an important enemy, like a boss at the very end of the hallway, but you also have other enemies that are less important that you still want to kind of keep track of? Well, you might want to implement an algorithm, an algorithm where you toy around with the heuristic such that it fits your needs. So this is what we came up with. If we, if we clear the board and we pick this funky heuristic here and we visualize it, You'll see that it looks like Dijkstra's at first, and it explores kind of the left, a bit of the top, a bit of the right, but it still converges to your target node. And you could play around with this even more. You could put a bit more power on the heuristics so that your algorithm looks like, like this, where it converges even faster, but still kind of looks at the sides. And you can do tons of funky stuff with A star, with heuristics, to get you know, awesome algorithms that fit your needs. And so the last takeaway that I want you guys to um, leave with is that A star is just awesome, and uh, pathfinding is fascinating. Thank you.